aka Ash McCormick and welcome to the first episode of the newly rebooted show on the B-Side channel Bars the B-Side album review show where we go in depth into the newest independent albums hitting the music scene this is a new show on the B-Side channel we've completely redone the structure so if you've watched the show in the past this is going to be very different uh, but we've completely redone the structure in 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 the <laughs> we were completely redone the structure in the hopes to create a platform for independent artists to not only share their new music, but to also go into the creative and creation process behind their new albums. Um, the artists on these shows are hand-selected to appear on these shows because we really believe in the music that they're putting out. And we think that you should too. We think that you should be flooding your Spotify playlists with their tracks. We think you should be you know, giving them streams. You should be watching their videos. You should be buying their merch and you should be doing this yesterday. So uh, that's what the show is intended to do. And we really hope that you give them a listen and you support our show um, to, to it support these independent artists on this show. So we're gonna go ahead and put up the socials for, the, for all of our channels so that you can go ahead and follow. Uh, so that you can stay up to date on the independent artists and the best independent music out there. So go ahead and get out your phone, follow if you haven't already. Also, as always, if you want to follow me, you can follow me at What's Up Ash on Instagram and Twitch, and you can follow me at Ash Astonish on Twitter. And now I'm really excited because we've got two very special guests in the house. Please welcome Casey Yale and Definitive. Thank you guys so much for being here. I'm so excited you guys are here. Thanks for having us. Of course. Thank you. Awesome. Um, so. You guys are dropping a new album. It's called Day and Night. That's right, Day and Night. It drops this Friday, and I'm super excited to hear about it. So let's just jump right in. Um, so tell us, where are we going to be able to find the album? So it'll be on Spotify, Apple Music. It'll also be on our website. It'll be on my website, theofficialyale.com. Um, you can get it directly, direct download from there, or you can go and stream it or buy it from it you know, iTunes and all that. Awesome, awesome. Uh, so before we jump right in, is there anything that you want to tell us about the album, give a little background or introduction to it? Um, you know, to me, this, this album is just all about being real while remaining positive. Nice. You know, and, and, and I mean, last, the last year, the atmosphere of it, it's just like, um, you want to show the wrestle of aiming for the peace yeah right? yeah no totally um so i i definitely want to talk about how you chose the title but i personally felt like it was very fitting um because the album really does feel like there's it's got this like equal duality through it um like, like it's really split between like some fun catchy energetic tracks but it's also really balanced by this equal dose of like moody like troubled uh, like down tempo tracks that uh, touch on like more serious subject matters and issues. Um, so it really, I feel like it really gave that balance between like a day and night or light or dark. Um, was that the intention and where the title came from, or was this something else that went into it? Definitely, yeah. Just start a day. I mean, just like every day, you know, seems positive, whatever. Day into night, man. Just light to dark. So, so, so I got that. <laughs> yeah, on the head. Awesome. Um, so let's chat about the artwork a little bit. Um, so, you know, it's kind of got like this, is that a window pane? And it's got like some light shining through it with some red. Do you want to talk about the artwork at all? Yeah. So, um, if you will, what I, what I did was took a couple, I took a picture of myself actually. Um, and then I took a picture of the sun and the moon and some trees. Um, and then kind of made it so that you didn't understand what anything was. Right, yeah. And there's just this door of light mm -hmm. in between it all that kind of, it just like anything that comes out from there emanates into anything, you know? And I like the idea of something just having this, this light that, that nothing can touch, right. you know? That's dope. Yeah, no, I, I like that. Um, so you made it yourself. I did, and then Devin put on some pretty dope finishing touches. That's sick. Awesome. Um, all right, so we start and end the album with Got Me Like. Uh, is there any reason in particular that you decided to bookend this album with that track? Well, 
Yeah, it, it's just, it's it makes sense, you know? It's like, um, I've said it in a couple interviews at this point, you know, Nipsey said that life's a marathon, and I always say that every day is a marathon. Mm -hmm. And it's like, sometimes you're just trying to get back to square one by the end of the day, right? Yeah. You know, and it doesn't always feel the same as in the morning. Mm -hmm. So, same song, different mood. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, um, so, you end the album with sort of a reprise to the intro track, right? Uh, but it's being a drop mix. It seems like an interesting choice for you. What what inspired the drop mix being the way to close out the album? That was my idea. <laughs> uh, well, I guess it was just like, you know, it's almost like a bonus bonus song. Yeah. That it was kind of like, Casey, Casey did have the idea too that it was kind of like, we call that the night version. You know, yeah. that it, since you said it is kind of a reprise. You know, it's mm -hmm. a little bit different. Some of the same elements exist in it. So it was just kind of like, well, let's bring it back, you know what I yeah. mean? Because it's like, okay, the whole day happened. Mm -hmm. Now let's bring back, like, a different version of, in a way, a new day could start or end. That's it. That's cool. I like that. That's, that's awesome. Um, so let's get into the track a bit. First off, I feel like the track itself is very you. Um, the first time I heard it, I thought it suited you really well. Like, it definitely feels like it's coming from, like, the day side of the album. Oh, yeah, yeah. Um, yeah. And it feels really sunny and energetic. Um, it's very upbeat and sort of jazzy. The whole track is like really catchy and feel good. Um, from the sound of it, it feels like it was like really fun for you to make. I mean, just sitting in there, just watching Devin pull all the knobs and levers. Sorry, watching Definitive. My bad, bro. I'm <laughs> giving out your name. Thank you. <laughs> watching Definitive uh, pull out all the knobs and levers and just like cooking, you know. And yeah. and I love to just sit in there and vibe when he's making stuff. But this was just like. I was just sitting there. I was like, dude, I feel like I'm on the beach right now. Yeah. Just chilling. And we need, this has to happen. Yeah. Right? Can, can you talk a bit about like how the track came about and give us an idea about what the production process was like? Yeah. Usually for me, uh, you know, just I'll just cook stuff uh, all the time. You know, moody stuff, happy stuff, whatever. I like to make a bit of everything. Um, and usually when I have like an idea of whatever I'll, an idea or whatever that I'm like, oh, this will work for Casey, that it's kind of just like, okay, Casey, you know, because we live together, so it's kind of oh, like, okay, oh, yeah. hey, come over that's, here. That's super convenient. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> or he'll just literally open up the door and be like, what's up? Like, yeah. hey. Uh, so it was kind of like that, that, uh, I, you know, like you said, he was just sitting in there while I was making this, and we were just kind of like, hey, like, let's do something on it. He wrote it. I think the same day that I approached him with it. Mm. Um, and then we kind of figured on the hook, as the audience will hear, is, mm -hmm. uh, you know, that it's just the simple, you got me like, Ooh. Yeah. you know. Ooh. Um, Ooh. Yeah. What, what came first, the melody or the lyrics? Like, do you write the lyrics for the melody or do you write the melody for the lyrics? It, nah, this is, this is one of those things where I'm, I'm it just kind of like came out. It came together. Right? <laughs> like it just kind of organic. Like you guys it created just, it together. Yeah. That's awesome. Like it just kind of just like you're feeling the song so strongly, right? And I always say like the best producers put you in your own world right. so that you can just go and like be, you know, essentially you want to be. What's her name? Come on, she's legendary. It's Sound of Music. Oh. Uh, uh. Oh, this is <laughs> terrible. Mary Poppins, we we, we love you. <laughs> We know your actual name, Mary Poppins. Uh, so, doggone it, Julie Andrews. Julie Andrews, there thank you. I didn't have thank to look you. it up. I had to. Yeah, you want the producer to put you in your own world so that you can be Julie Andrews, jumping around on the hill, totally free to just sing whatever is alive in you. Yeah, and that's what it, that's what it was like. That's exactly what it was like. That's awesome. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to re-listen that track with Julie Andrews. Dancing <laughs> there you go. <laughs> you got me like, ooh. That's awesome. All right, so after a really peppy and upbeat track, you follow it with Upstream, uh, which is a lot more down-tempo and mellow. Um, and some of the production elements in particular, like the guitar and the drums um, and some of the flow, to me, felt like really reminiscent of like, like kind of some late Mac Miller type elements. Um, did you have any sort of inspirations or influences for this track? That's actually an interesting one, because uh, that song came from a jam that uh, Colin Moore, Casey, and I were all doing live and just recording into my setup. Mm 
mm-hmm. and just all jamming on the guitars and just yeah. filming it, like not live or anything, just to have fun. And that song was probably about 45 minutes into what we jammed on. Casey actually sang the rough version of it live into the thing. And then I just kind of went in and chopped it all up and made oh, it wow. into a song. <laughs> and then, so yeah, I will say that like, I, I am very influenced by like Mac and, mm-hmm. and, um, and anybody that's just super creative and willing to just, I don't know, I love live instruments. Yeah, so no, like, totally. I, I definitely heard that on this track. Um, so we can't really talk about Upstream without mentioning the stellar feature on the track, Definitive himself. I had, oh. I had no clue that that was you. Yep. He t- yep. So so the track says featuring Colin Moore. So I thought that Colin <laughs> Moore was the feature, but that's that's not the right, case. Because Definitive Colin is Moore is, is featured on the production, and you are the guest verse. Yep. So yep. W- why did, why is the track list not featuring Definitive? Oh, uh, I just want to be low key. Yeah, more low key. Um, kind of i don't know actually <laughs> i you know I, i'm just kind of low about my craft there, there's actually a metadata thing to this because it's it's casey yale and definitive on the actual thing oh. and so you can't put featuring the same artist gotcha. afterwards yeah or we could have just kept it casey and then featuring Definitive. could have been <laughs> yeah. featuring definitive <laughs> and colin yeah. moore would have been funny uh but yeah no i thought that was an interesting i, I totally did not know that that was you so um that that took me by surprise and i was i was very happy with it Appreciate um you. i have to give you props because i thought that your guest verse was like impeccable for the track Thank um you. i thought it suited the track perfectly and the track itself it kind of feels like you're like you're floating right and in, in fact floating upstream is the first part of your verse right yep. um but your verse comes in and i feel like it kind of gave the track some guidance like it was like okay like we're kind of cruising like we're floating but okay, now the foot's on the gas. Like we're really right, going right, somewhere. Right. Like we're on a mission now. Exactly. Um, but yeah, I thought that this verse fit really well with the track. I'm, I'm just really happy that you jumped on it. That was a Thank really you. nice surprise. Thank you. Um, do you want to do you want to talk about any of the the production process with this? Because I know that you mentioned Mac. And is there any other like in, inspirations or like how how did this track come about production wise? Um, we're still on upstream. Um, yeah. Just just chopping up the 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 live session, um, and then for me like. I kind of just like, I'll kind of just hold up when I'm writing, um, Mm -hmm. you know, so make the beat and whatever. And I have to really detach from the production because like Mm. if I'm overthinking the production, like I've always said it's easier for me to be featured on a song than it is for me to write to my own stuff. Um, So that being said, yeah, production, I just wanted to keep it bummy, like and sounding just kind of like floaty and, Mm -hmm. and airy and like, you know, you could be. Uh, watching the sun go down, drinking with some friends mm-hmm. at a skateboard park, whatever, like literally just lifestyle. You totally. Know? Totally. Yeah. So um, I love the wordplay on your verse. Thank you. Uh, you say, the lonely boy picked up the microphone, singing, boy, if you don't tell them, then they may never know. Cause, but went out along the road, because where I've been, you will never go. My heart's been dipped in gold, but I've been looking for my home. Going back and forth, I always find a reason to rock the boat. Um, there's some production elements in doubling up the back and forth that I thought were like a nice touch and brings like a nice allusion to that phrase, but also giving you like that bounce element. Um, but that particular phrasing caught my ear because there's a there's not only like a nice visual element to that, but it also evokes like that feeling of being lost but right, following right. your dreams regardless right, and like right. needing to shake shit up a bit. Yeah, you know? letting letting it just I don't know, just letting your goals be the guide, man. Yeah, because it it's always broken. Yeah. You know? Um, what was the, the process of like collabing with both of you doing, doing vocals, not just production? Well, I mean, I kind of did my part (laughs) during the jam, you know, and he just like grabbed that and was like, all right, great. Now I'm going to put a verse on it. I told him it was funny because like we couldn't articulate exactly what he was saying. And I was just like, Hey, can you come in and just sing that exactly the same way? And he was like, I don't know exactly what I said. And I was like, just make it up, like just make it sound the same. (laughs) <laughs> really organic. I, and then I just picked the parts that I remembered that I liked from it. I think, yeah, yeah, yeah. That's sick. Well, awesome. I I really I really enjoyed that track. So I'm I'm happy that you guys Appreciate were able to collab you. like that. Thank you. Um, so then we've got Runaway, uh, which is a track you actually released last year, right? Yeah, this is a re- re- remaster. It's a remaster. Okay, cool. Um, so one of the first things I noticed about this track is that it sounds, at least in the beginning, like it's a little deeper of a range for you than right. you normally sing in, right? Um, what was the development of this track like and how did you decide to start out with that like more deeper sultry sound in the beginning? Ooh, 
Well, I was sitting. I was sitting at the end of a cul-de-sac, pissed off at the world, the whole world. And yeah, but leave now, right? That's how that goes. Okay. Yeah. So I was, but I started thinking, what if I could write to everybody that I'm mad to? Let me write an open letter. If you're hurt, that's no excuse to be rude to me. Mm -hmm. Right? It's, all, it's like, I want to be a consoling ear, but also like, I'm not playing games. Right. I want to see you and I want to love you as you are. But also, I'm your friend and I want to say, this hurts. Yeah. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Once you come to that point of knowing that what you do... And I think everybody has to wrestle with this in some form or another. Maybe I'm wrong. But what you do uh, causes damage. How long do you run away from it before you deal with it? Right. Yeah. That's great. I, I love that concept. Um, so I, I just wanted to touch on a particular lyric that stood out to me because this part in particular, I feel like really represented that duality that we, that's present throughout the album. Uh, so you say, you're alone in crowded rooms, sweat too much when the speaker's mute, need your phone just to feel like you, chasing every little thing that moves. And then it moves into the type of vocals that we recognize more from you, where it's like that sort of emotional incline, and right. it's like a nice switch, and it also represents that duality. Um, but so then it switches to scared to move when they don't approve, numb from hate when you feel accused. See, I can relate, because I do it too, you're not alone, if only you knew. So you really evoked really elegant wordplay here um, of a concept that's like really prevalent in our society uh, of like feeling alone but also needing each other right um, but pushing back against each other see yeah uh, and thank I'm so glad that you like that verse because <laughs> that's my favorite word right there too yeah. is you're not alone mm. only if you knew if you knew yeah I thought that, I thought that's so great so I mean that's that's what you're talking about in runaway right right um, so it's like this concept where we like feel so alone, but everyone feels like that. Like we think that we're the only one that feels like that because we no one only wants live within our either. own. Right, we yeah. only live within our own being. So like we don't we don't think about it, and we run away because we're scared. But we, really, we just need to depend on each other. Right. Um, so I mean, I guess was that what you were trying to portray in the track, or was there any other emotions or concepts that inspired the lyrics here? No, that's it. Because then, because then when we go into the now. Why don't you give them what they want? Well, you're bringing them hell, right? right? So it's like, it's like, no, it just keeps on ramping up on that. It's like, um, if dreams can, because if you think that you've been, what is it? Because if you think that you've been sleeping well, then don't you blink because your night's going well. You're deep in sleeping, all your friends can tell. Kind of like a play on that whole idea yeah. that what you focus on can manifest right? right and and right so it's like all right do you want to bring them heaven do you want to bring them hell mm -hmm. it's up to your dreams right? right no that's awesome um but overall i think you expressed like a relatable concept in this track um with really elegant wordplay and some really nice vocal elements that are a little different from you but still within your comfort range um but i think it suited you really well and showed another side to you so i really enjoyed that thank you um so then we have 3 a.m right in the middle of the album um, and you've got some features on this as well. Oh, yeah. Uh, from Young M and Jordan Smooth. Um, tell us a little bit about each of these guys and how they got on that track. Oh, okay. So that, that one happened. Uh, we were having a cook-up. We have these, like, super sessions. Up? Yeah. That's what you call Nice them? little cook-up. Nice. Super sessions. And, um, we had the f this was the first time that we hosted it. And I've been, like, I've been trying to do this because I have, like, a setup in each room so it's like you, you could be doing beats in this room and this and this that's sick. so um yeah so i was like we had one we've been at a lot of sessions that were very unproductive right yeah of you course know, of course have. there's but, gonna be more unproductive than productive oh yeah <laughs> especially the more people you get the yeah. more alcohol you get in the room yeah. it's, it's just gonna be unproductive yeah. anyway so we uh this was one that i just i cooked the beat up that took me like 20 minutes and there was Casey and um, Young M were in the room, Mario were in the room, and uh, Jordan was out in the other room recording vocals. 
for a different song. Anyways, Casey came in, barging in, and was like, yo, I got a hook. It was like, okay, come in, lay it down. And then Mario was like, I got a verse. So like, we literally did the whole song in one night. So wow. it was like, beat everything. So all natural yet again. Nice. It, it, yeah. And then how did you meet up with these guys? Like, how, how do you know each other? Uh, I used to work with Jordan. Okay. And then Young M is a friend of Jordan's. So oh, it was just at one of the other cookups that, nice. you know, we didn't get as much done. Yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know? <laughs> but we met people like Young M, right? So. Yeah, yeah. That's cool. That's cool. Um, so this is another really fun track, and I feel like it also is really signature to your sound. Um, and a lot of your tracks really evoke this like really fun energy. Um, and I know you like to like move around when you perform and like really feel it. Um, so that suits you. And of course, you and Definitive have like a lot of experience working together. So I feel like you're really able to harness that sound. Um, and I feel like it really shows on this track. Um, but you've also got like this really solid trap beat in 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 this song over like this syncopated melody. And is it, so, and then you also have like a like a is it a synth in the melody? So it was like a. Let's see, can we listen to it? You can listen to it. Let's listen to it. So you got like that. But then it changes, it's like right? Guitar. Then changes you got that. me driving right. this. You got me losing it's my too many secrets. Yeah. <laughs> then it's a. Uh, it's just another guitar. I'm not it's just lie. another guitar. Yeah. All right, that's yeah. cool. Layer. No, but I I really liked how it how it echoes how like you use the same sound but then mm -hmm. you echo it in like a different yeah, sound. Thank you. Um, so I like that. Um, so do you want to go into the production process on this track a little bit? Uh, sure. Um, how do I make beats? <laughs> <laughs> or just like what inspired know. that type of sound? Um, I honestly love making super fast paced, uppity energy, trap based beats that have a lo fi feel. Because mm -hmm, it, mm -hmm. it provides a different element than just, like, the lo-fi, boom-bappy, like, yeah. you know, chill-out music and whatever. It's almost like, okay, like, we're here to party or something. Like, I don't know. But either way, it's, like, it's, it's snapping. So whatever vibe you get from it, um, that's honestly what I'm looking for. But just, like, I love making really the peppy stuff. You yeah. know, it's just a lot of fun. Um, you can't just make angry yeah. trap beats all day and yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> like expect to like come out and be yeah. happy about stuff yeah. <laughs> like, and i know? think that's why you guys work so well together yeah, is because yeah. that you, this is the energy and that's pep, the guy so, like, exactly and then this is the producer for it so i think that's why you guys match so well appreciate that um, so 3 a.m is basically like a fun hook and then you've got like your guest first based off of that hook so did you write the hook for the song or the song for the hook like how did how did the, how did that work i mean it was just so we were so happy because it was like this idea mm -hmm. that we'd been talking about of like, dude, we can know all these talented people. If we literally just get them in a room, right. get them in the studio, bam, we can just get songs done. Mm -hmm. And the first time that we actually hosted this thing, we got one out of it, right? And we put it on an album, and now all of our friends are celebrating that fact, right? So it's, it, it was cool because yeah. it was just like... Yes, we did it all in the moment. We didn't overthink it. We didn't get too critical, and we just did it as a team. And boom! Look what happened. Right. Literally no redos, no re-records, no amazing. nothing. It that's was just that's the dream. Step up. No, you killed it. Leave. That's right. Great. That's awesome. So, what what was the time frame for that? Like, I know you said a day, but like two hours. Two maybe, hours. Maybe two hours. Yeah. Two hours. You had the song done, and then you just, just mastered it after. Yeah, just mixed it and mastered it after. That's sick. Yeah. It's amazing. That's that's the goal Moving right there. Light speed. Mic drop. <laughs> is that is that your green mic? Yeah, my green mic oh, fell. No. It fell out of my pocket. Green mic. I'm you sorry, I'm Here, I'll there I'll give go. him some love. <laughs> <All product. laughs> um, and then you also incorporated a clean version into this track as well, or yes. into the album as well. Well, it's the only song that actually. Yeah, needs so, a so clean that's version. so that's what I was gonna say <laughs> is that I thought it was a strange choice at first, but then I realized that it's the only track that needed a clean version. Right. Because <laughs> every other track on the clean uh, on the on every other track on the album is clean, and I saw that, and I actually look, went back and I looked at your Spotify because as a DJ, I download both the clean and the and the explicit because I just need both depending on what my audience is. So right. I use Spotify to see if I need to download a, a clean one or not. And so I went back, and there's no ease. There's no ease on on any of your stuff. There's no ease on this my stuff. If you want if you want the ease, you go to find the features. Right. right. Yeah. So the features is the only only one you need, and. So now that I think about it, I don't know if I've ever actually heard you say an expletive in, in real life. <laughs> then that, that's just your style, isn't it? You just don't... It slips out. Um, yeah. But if I use it, I use it either 
in love. <laughs> I hope to. But I you hope use to. it as like a or means. I use it when you don't want to see me. Right. <laughs> you know? It's like a means of communication for you. Uh, yeah. I, I for me, like I used to cuss so much mm. that like people would just get offended. So I was like, all right, fine. I'm just gonna like start replacing my words with other things. Mm -hmm. And then I just forced myself to do it for so long that now when I say it, it's like I really want to mean it. You know. Right. Well, he means it. Yeah, no, that, that's <laughs> I, I respect that. But I, I think it's really cool that you're able to craft this wordplay without relying on an expletive as a filler. Because I feel like a lot of artists use expletives, like lean on expletives as a filler. It's kind of like a crutch, like, oh, what could, oh that rhymes. I guess As I'll opposed to just using, it, using it to express yourself. Right, right, exactly. But you're also obviously not opposed to your features using it. And so that's what I appreciate about you as an artist is that you always speak in your authentic voice, but you also allow others to speak in their authentic voice as well. I'm so glad you recognized That's awesome. Oh, go ahead. Go ahead, bro. <laughs> um, but yeah, so I, I think that the, it shows that both are able to not only coexist, but also collaborate and thrive. So I, I noticed that, and so I just wanted to appreciate it. That's, that's the culture that I want to perpetuate. Yeah. You know, with, with who I am as a person, if I leave a legacy on this, in this world, it's that you know, I wanted people to know that we can have conversations. We can let the other person finish talking, even if they're going to take two hours. Mm -hmm. We can hear them, and then we can respond, and that's how peace happens. Right. You know? That's awesome. I like that. Um, all right, so then we have Lunar Eclipse. So Lunar Eclipse comes in, and it brings us back down tempo a bit, uh, and it feels also like a bit of a different sound for you. Um, on this album in particular, I feel like I, I hear you kind of half the time have like a strong footing in the type of sound that you're comfortable with, um, but also equally exploring into different genres. Yeah, that, that'd be correct. Um, so like on this tr track, I hear like some cloud rap elements a little bit um, and some different vocal layers that you're experimenting with. So what was that process like for both of you um, during the creation process? Honey, you go first. Moody music. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, no, I just like, I made it, I'm, I started making the beat and I think that was one of the ones that I just kind of made on my own and then had Casey come in on, but it was like, I just wanted to make something really moody. Mm -hmm. You could almost say Travis Scotty. Yeah, you yeah, know what I, mean? I, I definitely picked um, up on that. And it almost felt like this kind of dark opera to me, mm -hmm. like that it starts out with this dirgy like intro that just like takes the whole verse and then it hits, you know. Right. Um, so I was just trying to make, I like to make things go from moody to just boom like explosive yeah. you know yeah. explosive moody or whatever you want to call it mm -hmm. so then casey just came and filled the thing up and it was it was done <laughs> it was simple uh you want to tell him about your book? i mean i love the track because i grew up doing musicals and so yeah. i kind of have this bit of a philosophy i don't tell everybody all the time but basically i think people work best when life is a musical you know like I just think of everything as a song. It's like, yeah. you're talking to me? Yeah. I might be hearing it as a song. Yeah, yeah, you know? Yeah. And so it's like, when, I, when I'm speaking, I'm always thinking, I'm in a, it's like, hey, I'm in a musical everywhere I go. So I just might bust out singing. You can ask this, dude. I'll just bust out singing anywhere. And I don't mean to sometimes. You know, it's inappropriate. I have to call that back. But anyways, the point of this, <laughs> that's a good sidetrack. <laughs> the point of this song was just to express that feeling of when somebody goes into the next room um and it's a new connection mm -hmm. you know and you're just on like that cloud nine yeah and you're waiting to see what happens next right and it's just that suspense just that moment that's what that's what i wanted to capture yeah that's awesome do you do you see like here in color or like do you like here in music synesthesia yeah I feel like you like if if any of a lot of the artists I know I feel like you'd be one of those people. No, I hear. I just I just hear I hear what's out here in the world mm -hmm. and then I hear a lot of other things. Mm -hmm. You know. You could you could say I'm tuned into frequencies, you could say, you know, I'm hearing spiritually, but w whatever it is, there's something else going on. Yeah. Totally. Yeah. I, I I can see that about you. Um <laughs> All right, so finally we have the good kid. Um, right before the finale of the drop me, the, the got me like drop mix, and obviously the very interesting thing that sticks out on this track is the beatboxing in the intro. 
Um, can you tell us where that came from or where the inspiration for that sound came from? Yo, so Casey <laughs> produced a lot of that record. Ooh, I did not know this. Hey. Let's talk about that. All right. Well, all I do all day is pick up my phone, get ideas, and record them into the phone. Mm -hmm. And I was at work, and one of my supervisors who I've known for like almost 10 years, I changed out of my clothes, and he saw that I had a tattoo. Mm. And he's like, Casey, you got a tattoo? You used to be such a good kid. And I was like, oh, yeah? Oh, yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. No, but so then, so then I, just, I just started thinking. I was, this was all, you know, a lot of this album was written during, like, one of the most, I've dealt with depression throughout my life. Yeah. And thanks to God, I haven't dealt with depression for a long time. But mm -hmm. this last year, I really kind of did have to deal with it a bit I again. I think we all did. Right? Yeah. So it was like, you're frustrated. You're depressed. Yeah. You're feeling at wit's end. And then someone's like, you used to be good. And it's like, <sighs> but, what help. happened? But he's a friend. But he's right, a friend. Right. So I did the right thing. I wrote the song. I went to him. I said, this is what I wrote. I'm not mad at you. I'm thankful because you created this song. Here's the song I wrote about Here's you. the song. Wow. <laughs> Thank you. Love you. <laughs> um, but, yeah, that's, what, that's how it got written. It was like, well, I need you to understand. And this is the deeper message. Mm -hmm. You're saying I used to be a good kid because I claim to be a Christian. Right? And that is exactly why. Let's not mince words. Right. It's because of my faith that you're holding me to a higher standard. And I need you to stop that. Matter of fact, I need everybody to stop that mm -hmm. because that's the problem. Right. And that's what creates cultures that won't talk about their shortcomings because everybody's expected to be perfect when nobody's perfect. Right. And aren't your, ta don't your tattoos, they're like, doesn't it have a cross in it? Yeah, it says There's three right crosses. Here, it's, three. It's, it's Jesus' cross and the thieves. So yeah, that's a good that. tattoo. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> like, you have a tattoo, I thought you were a good kid. That's a good tattoo. <laughs> Isn't the other one say God? This man does not have tattoos. This is, Other and yet God. So in spite of my <laughs> chaos, there's God. <laughs> so such rebellious tattoos you've got there. <laughs> About God. Um, so I, I, correct me if I'm wrong, I feel like this is one of the more night-feeling tracks on the album. Yeah? Oh, yeah. 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 Because yeah. Um, it, it's kind of more moody, and it handles a deeper subject matter. Um, it talks about heartbreak. talks about losing trust in people talks about going through changes, mentions substances, but also spirituality and really looking into oneself. Um, so a particular lyric that stood out to me, the I'm preaching on because I'm an optimistic man. That's why I'm always warring against my flesh because the battle's inside my skin. Right. That's powerful stuff. Thank you. Um, can you elaborate a bit on what you meant when you wrote that and how were you inspired to incorporate that lyric into the track? Absolutely. Um, so... I can be an idealist and I can tell you all of my ideas, right? But as history proves, if my actions don't follow it, then what am I but oh, hope deferred, right? And um, as I learn this, it's like, okay, I'm preaching authenticity. I'm telling everybody, hey, come real, come real. Don't be ashamed, just come real, right? But then I've got my own thing that I wrestle with where, oh, I don't know if I want to say that. I know I want to be transparent. I know I like the idea of everybody being totally bare with each other, but are we actually comfortable with it, right? And I think that that's the fight. Yeah. And I say that because I wrestle against my flesh, right? Because, and I'm going to get deep super quick, mm -hmm. real quick. Mm -hmm. I do believe that carbon itself always wants to return to itself mm -hmm. and spirit always wants to return to spirit. I think that anything where the carbon gets to join other carbon is always um, is always a motive um, that becomes about how much can I add to my current carbon, right? And the more that this carbon gets, mm -hmm. the less I feel that push of that fire inside. Mm. So I war against that carbon because I'm fire. And I want to burn. Yeah. That's awesome. The good kid. <laughs> That's awesome. Yeah, that, I mean, I, I love all these tracks, but that, that was probably one of my favorite tracks on this album. That, that, that was great. That one has a cool sound. Yeah. Um, 
So then we're back to the book end of Got Me Like um, for a very, I, I feel like a very cohesive body of work. Um, I feel like seven's a good number for you. And I, I wasn't sure at first. I thought I, thought was, I was going to feel like it was really short. But I feel like you kind of pulled a Kanye and like, like made, made seven just be like a really cohesive and solid track list that branches off, it, that's still able to branch off into some new styles for you, but also sounds still very you. Um, and I really enjoyed it, and you should both be proud of the work that you put in, because I think it's a really great project. Thank you. Um, but yeah, so I feel really grateful that I've been able to have an early listen to it, um, so thank you both. Um, live music is coming back. Is there any track in particular that you're really excited to perform? I love performing therapy, mm. um, but as far as off of this album... yeah. Mm. Are there any ideas that oh, you come Lunar, with stuff? Good Kid, Got Me Like. I, honestly, I'm excited. I, I know, it's going to sound <laughs> stupid, but yeah. <laughs> I just want to go tour the album now. Are you, <laughs> you going to do, do both versions of, Dro of Got Me Like? Are you going to do the drop mix and the regular version? I mean, it's going to be fun to figure out how to like, right? incorporate that into the show, right? right. That's cool. Um, all right, so uh, you recently shot a new video. Yes. Uh, uh, is... I know we don't have a date yet, but can you tell people where we'll, where we'll be able to find it? Um, it'll definitely be on YouTube whenever that drops. It'll definitely be on, you know, we'll always drop a version on, on IGTV. Mm -hmm. And you can always find it on our hyperlinks or our websites. Awesome. Mm -hmm. um, also, so, yeah, I'm really looking forward to that video. I'll definitely be looking out for that. Um, so go ahead and do you want to tell them what your socials are so that they can keep a lookout for that? Sure. Uh, I am Casey Allen Yale. That's all one word. You can also find me under the official Yale, but that's a broken link. So let's go with Casey Allen Yale or Casey Yale on Spotify. The official Yale, just so that I'm on top of the SEO and, you know, Yale school doesn't beat me out. Anyways, go ahead, Definitive. <laughs> I'm Definitive. Uh, definitive on Instagram is D-I-F-I-N-I-T-I-V. -I -I and then uh, on Twitter, just Definitive Music spelled the same way quite awesome. simple yeah all right so you mentioned therapy so we're gonna go ahead and check that out in the meantime uh so we're gonna check out your most recent video give people a taste of what they find if they catch a live show or just a feel of your energy do you want to go ahead and introduce that video for us sure oh just speak to the camera real quick yeah. hey everybody you're watching therapy with definitive also california and casey yale <laughs> let's check it out My psychiatrist. I explain like all my pain and all my mind bliss. I give my heart up to the Lord, but I'm a nihilist. And I be reaching for my sword, but it's a mild kiss. It's a cupid come and do your worst. I think I'm over it. Not stupid, catch me in a verse before October. Hits. I told you 2020's gonna lay a precedence. And here we are, in the fresh than a whole pack of mints. Uh, excuse me, you owe that to the blessing of the one you love who saved you. And thank God for the testament and all the rest of it. Money goes and I'm nestled, and they told me stick to singing, so I'm showing them what blessed is. Cause the beat is my therapist. We listen to each other, one know just what the other need. I said the beat is my inheritance. Now roll a J and smoke it up and then exhale that shell that shell. Cause the beat is my therapist. We listen to each other, one know just what the other need. I said the beat is my inheritance. Now roll a J and smoke it up and then exhale that shell that shell. Look at my life, I made it. Mama's came from nothing, baby. Started from the bottom, now I'm at the top like cherries, baby. Woke up this morning, said today I'm gonna change the world. Started with my old lady, showed her she's my baby girl. Put mama in a big old house, thank God I paid it off. I can never say it, I can say it, now I made it, y'all. Got me a big old place, we barbecuing every day. And on the weekend, Magic City, gotta make it rain. I smoke a J and float away, remedy all my pain. I hope I don't have to die before they say my name. I live my life and then I live it to its limits. And you ain't gotta like it, just remember, mind your business, yeah. Cause the beat is my therapist. We listen to each other, one know just what the other need. I say the beat is my inheritance. Now roll a J and smoke it up and then excel it. Cause the beat is my therapist. We listen to each other, one know just what the other need. I say the beat is my inheritance. Now roll a J and smoke it up and then excel it.
That was Therapy from Casey Yale. Thank you so much, Casey and Definitive, for joining us today. Congratulations on the new album. I'm super excited for you both. I can't wait for people to check it out. Do you want to go ahead and let us know about the album and where, when and where we can find it? Sure. Yeah, so the album is dropping on July 2nd of this year. So that's 7, 2, 2. We don't say zeros. 2, 1. Yeah. Also, this it's this Friday, right? This Friday. It's this Friday. <laughs> this Friday. <laughs> it's kind of this Friday. <laughs> All right. Well, I can't wait. Um, that, that's what I'm definitely looking forward to that this weekend. So we like to end the show with three singles of the week from other independent artists that we think that you should check out. So we're going to check out those singles right now. The first one is from Dylan Ra, Honeymoon. Honeymoon. <laughs> Yeah. Honeymoon, you got my heart in tune I wished upon a full moon for you Now I'm dealing with your attitude Now you sing for me, I used to sing the blues Had a hard time keeping this shit casual We got Demir Major with Rapido Mentira No se asuste and news of all the latest independent music hitting the scene you can catch me at what's up ash we've got some shows from young baka productions coming up this week we've got the show at el cocodrilo on saturday and we've got venice every sunday thank you for tuning in to the premiere episode of bars the b-side album review show i'm your host ash and we'll see you next time <laughs>